Hi, it's me, Heather Jo, and I want to talk to you about Guild's Companion Plants and Polycultures. And I'm out here in the garden in the dark, and I wanted to remind you that one of the many functions of plants is to smell wonderful at night, which is what I've got going on here with my patio. So let's talk about Guild's Companion Plants and Polycultures. What's the difference between a guild, companion planting, and a polycultural food forest? Here is a guild. The Three Sisters is a classic guild. Corn, beans, and squash. So those are three annual plants that support each other while they're growing. So the corn grows straight up and creates a support system for the beans. The beans fix nitrogen for the corn and the squash, and the squash provides a ground cover to sprawl out underneath the corn. So this would be considered companion planting. And you know, you can create companion planting sections that are lined up together and still have a pretty manageable traditional row crop situation, but much more diverse than a monocrop. So this is a guild. So a guild tends to include perennials and annuals and the plants will be stacked in space and time and function. So there's, you plant trees to create a windbreak and to create habitat and to provide nuts and to provide shade for smaller plants. And you do fruit trees and you do medicinals and insectaries to attract pollinators and repel pests. And you do ground covers to create a living mulch and to hold moisture in the soil and so on. So this would be a guild. Okay, now, so we have a companion planting here. <laughs> and then we have a guild. And companion planting plus guilds, so you can line guilds up just like you line up those companion plantings. And when you combine them in a whole system design, then you get a polyculture. And you can have groups of companion plantings in between different types of guilds that have different types of trees according to the microclimates that they're in. And you can, you can get pretty chaotic if you do that. So it's important to create some sort of order so that you can still manage the place. So what I recommend is a system called alley cropping. And that's where everything is still built on contour and you have these rows of perennial guilds and in between you have sections where there's companion plantings and then together it creates the whole system perennial permaculture garden. So now on a slope sideways this is what this would look like. So these are your swales. Your water comes in and it, and it percolates through and down. And ideally, you know, you would, you would send the water back and forth across this. As it goes down the slope, you've got your berms, you've got your swales, and you've got your mixed polycultures and guilds to create your system. So to review, layers in a polyculture, layers in time, layers in space, and layers of function. So how many different ways can you use plants? How many different functions are there for a plant? Layers in time, plants that succeed each other over time. Some are perennial and they have their peak periods in the seasons and then when they're dormant, then you can grow other things. And some plants die after a year or two and you should have other plants coming up behind them. And then layers in space. So you've got your trees and your shrubs and your ground covers and so on. So in a multi-layer food forest, so we've seen some drawings, let's look at some photographs. So in a multi-layer perennial polyculture, you'd have all of these layers happening at once. Layers in time, layers in space, and layers of function. And then you would group those by microclimates. So a hot south-facing microclimate is going to have a completely different types of guilds in it than a cold shady microclimate or a dry microclimate or an edge zone. 
You know, there's multifunctional ways to do this. Sometimes you wouldn't have all layers in every guild. Some guilds are just trees. So here's a, here's a hedgerow guild that is mostly trees. There's vines on the fence, and then there's trees along the fence line. So there's no ground covers here. There's no little small shrubs because that doesn't serve the function of the overall planting. So there's no hard and fast rules, and there's lots of ways to group these plantings. Here's a dry zone microclimate. Water comes through. And this is an edge zone. It's really shady. Certain plants, only certain plants will grow here. And it's a low maintenance edge in a zone three garden. So you would choose different plants for those guilds and microclimates. It's always going to be site specific. Me, I tend to go with more simple guilds. I wouldn't put like, for example, seven plants in every guild. I think it gets a little too messy. All of these pictures are of my own garden. And so what I would like to, what I'll do is I have 30 fruit trees on a quarter acre site. And what I will do is I'll plant one or two companion plants around each tree. And the overall experience is still very diverse, but it's also possible to manage. So just a couple more pictures of my garden. So the water comes in from here and then it cycles through the garden back and forth and it winds around to all of these different plantings, goes in circles and then pushes itself back up. So I have a very flat site, but I've created a, the illusion of contour and I'm able to still move water across the site. And in this front area, I have lots of veggies up front and there are uh, companion plantings. And then in the back area, I have lots of guilds and polycultures around these trees and the annuals are mixed in between. So the end result of mixing plants together in these ways and doing these polycultural plantings is that you get year round food. You get the experience of feeling like you live in a paradise. You're interacting with the plants and they're interacting with you and you get to witness the way they fill spaces and you get to do things like turn a lawn into a beautiful perennial polycultural garden. So here are just a few before and after pictures from my place. We've been here just two years, and as you can see, it's been a pretty serious transformation. It was just lawn and some neglected fruit trees when we got here, so this was a driveway, but we don't have a car, so we turned the driveway into a flower garden, and there's lots of fig trees and medicinal herbs and perennial flowers and fruits and and then of course our annual vegetable patch which is on contour and right up close to the house in our zone one and we're very happy in our little permaculture paradise and you can be too and i just want to say that even if you live in the city or if you live in a little trailer anyone can do this kind of work wherever you are don't wait to do permaculture you can always do more gardens later i have done many many dozens of gardens from scratch and this just happens to be where i am now so best of luck to you and thanks for being here with us in this video about growing plants together